Hi and welcome to this Elementor Coffee Break video quick tip. So in this week's video we're going to be taking a look at the latest update for Elementor Pro. Now this is the Pro only version so if you have the free version you're not going to have access to this latest update and what it brings to us. And what it does bring to us is the ability to now create great looking call to action panels. So in this video I'm going to take you through, show you some of the basics, show you some examples and get you a good idea of exactly what could be done with this latest addition to Elementor Pro. So if you don't have Elementor Pro and you're considering upgrading to the full version, the Pro version, please consider using the link in the description below. They're affiliate links. They give a small percentage back for every purchase made, and it costs you no more money. So if you'd like to support the channel, what we do, please consider using those links in the description below. Anyway, without further ado, I've got a couple of examples of the new call to action in front of me. You can see we've got these three panels that sort of go over and say exactly what it is that you have to offer with this particular website. So you can see it gives us some nice simple information. We mouse over, we get this nice little zoom effect, and that's just sort of one simple example. So if I jump over to the admin section, you can see this is the same page in action. So let's jump in to take a look at what options we have as part of these call to action panels. So if I just select this object, if you take a look on the left hand side, here's the basic information we have. The usual three separate tabs, content and style, is where we can go through and set everything up. So the first thing we have is we have a couple of different types of skins. We've got a classic skin and we've got a cover skin. And we'll take a look at the cover a little bit later on, but for now we're going to concentrate on what could be done with these particular panels. We've then got the option to control the layout, and again, we can control the layout based upon the different type of device that we're actually viewing this on. So we can have different types of layouts for mobile, for tablet, or for desktop, which is a great way of making sure that the end user gets the best end result when they're looking at your website. Then got the option to control the actual image itself and what size we're going to use. You can see we've got a whole range of different options. You will probably see something different in there depending upon the way that you've got your copy of Elementor Pro and your copy of WordPress set up. Next up, we've got the option for the content, and you can see we've got the normal sort of insert your title, insert the actual content you want, specify what HTML tag you want, use the title, any links. You can see we've got button text at the moment. Mine doesn't show a button, but if I just put a link in there, for example, a null link, you'll see, oops, sorry, wrong location. We'll just say click here. I have another link down there. You can see it'll go to a, the relevant page. But you can see we've got access to easily create those buttons on there if, should we need to. And if you want to get rid of it, we can simply empty that out. And when there's nothing in there, it hides the button, which is pretty much what Elementor Pro and Elementor does with any kind of buttons or links. If you don't put anything in there, it effectively just hides it for you, which is great. So you notice we've also got this option for graphic elements. At the moment it's set to nothing, so nothing is being displayed. But we could, if we wanted to, put another image into the flow of the text. You can see that will automatically add that in there. We can just click and just add any image you want in, insert our media. And we can go through and we can specify, again, the size that we want to use. So we can fine-tune that and get exactly what we want. We can also use icons. So you can see we can mix and match icons with images and so on to get a really nice creative way of using this call to action to really grab the attention of the visitor to your site. So let's just take that off, set that back to normal. You'll see we've also got the option for a ribbon at the bottom. So if we click on there, let's just say, for example, we've added new content. We'll just say updated, for example. And you'll see now that automatically puts in this little uh, ribbon on the right hand side or the left hand side, depending on where you want to put it, over the top of your image, saying that your content's been updated effectively. So it's a really cool way of being able to sort of grab people's attention very easily by using this. And if we jump over to the style section, we can start now controlling all of the different elements that make up this call to action. You can see various different options have the ability to go in and fine tune based upon the devices that you're using it and viewing it on. So that's, again, really cool to make sure you get a great looking result for everybody. We can then go through and control the content alignment. So you can see we've got the box. Depending upon how we set this up, we'll take a look at some other options in a moment. We can control the alignment of the text the vertical position of the information that's being displayed, if we want to add padding in there, or effectively if we want to remove the padding, you can see we can set that to zero. So we can again fine tune that should we need to, to get exactly what we want to make sure it looks great. Then you come down, you've got the image option, so we can do things like we can set a minimum width and a minimum height. So that's really cool, we can go through and fine tune and configure that. 
Then we've got the content option, so we can go through, we can control all the typography for the title independent of the description. We can also go through and set any colors we want in there, so background colors, for example. So we can set this to any kind of color we want. Very easy, we can use our transparencies on this, should we want to get really sort of write down to exactly what we want. We can also go through and set any hovers and things like that, so we can have a hover effect when you go over something to give the end user some kind of visual representation or notification that they can do something. You know, you have a lot of really cool ways you can work with this to get exactly what you want to do. So let's just clear that from there. Don't want anything on there. So you see background color, title color, description color. We can control all those options. Next up, we've got the ribbon. So if we don't want that orange color to be used, we can set this to any color we want. So if I want that to be red, I can set it to be red or blue, anything you want to stand out with the design that you're working with. We can also go through and do things like control the typography, add a box shadow to this. Tons of really cool ways of tweaking this. And finally, we have the hover effect. So you can see that we've got a typical simple zoom on there at the moment. Well, I could change that if I wanted to move down, for example. And you can see now we get a different kind of effect on there. So we can tweak this to get what we want to get a really nice sort of level of interaction. We could even use things like blend modes on there and have overlay colors as well. So we can say we want to put an overlay of blue on there. And we could sort of set that to be semi-transparent. And if you wanted to use a blend mode, so for example, overlay, you can see we can easily create these different kinds of effects. So this is a really good way of being able to fine tune and tweak things if you don't want to have to use something like Photoshop to get in and edit your images to make sure that everything sits in with the design that you're working with. You can even use CSS filters on this. So you can see we can go through and we've got the option to put blurs and brightness and contrast and saturation and so on. So a really creative way of working. So I'm going to set this back to normal. So I'm going to clear that. And we'll set that back to normal as well. We can also go through and set the effect duration. So if we want this to happen quicker or in a shorter period of time, we can tweak that to get the end result that looks great for what we want it to do. So that's just one example. And as you can see, you don't really have to use these as call to action boxes. I've used them in a different context here where I just want to give information about the different things that are on offer on this website, but to give some sort of sense of interactivity. So when someone clicks or they mouse over something, it gives them some sense that something's going to happen, which I kind of like that effect. So you don't have to use them just for call to action boxes. But let's take a look at some other things we can do, how some of these settings will configure and change things. So let's just create a new setup. Let's just come in and add a new instance of this. So we'll say call to action, drag and drop that into there. So you can see it puts in a basic layout, which is split 50-50, image at the top, text and information at the bottom. Well, we're not limited to that. We can change the skin if we want to, to have a cover. So the text will actually go over the top of the image that we set. So let's just put an image in it to start off with. So we've got something to represent what we're doing. We we'll use this one because it's a nice large image and we'll say insert that. So you can see now we've got the text placed over the top of the image. We've got the zoom effect on there. We can go through and fine tune and tweak this to make sure that the picture looks as good as we want it to. We can also come in and control the content. I'll leave that for now. That's pretty self-explanatory as is the button text. But again, you can see we can set the ribbon on there if we want to. Again, we want we can set that out to the left or the right hand side. So all that is pretty simple. If we come to the style section, this is where we can start to configure different aspects of it. So you can see we've got the box. We can set a minimum height on this. So if we want this to be smaller than what's actually being displayed, we can tweak that. And alternatively, we can go bigger if we want to sort of have something that really grabs the attention. We then got the option for vertical position. As you can see by clicking on that, dictates exactly where the position of the content is going to be. Speaking of the content, we can jump down to the content tab and we can now start to fine tune and tweak this. So we could say we want to come in, increase the size of the heading, give that a bit more impact, should we say. And let's just change the font on there to something else. Again, to give us some real sort of standard design. And we can come in and we can say, let's set that to a specific weight. Oh, wrong one, sorry. To a specific weight and... We'll set that to be uppercase. We can even, if we wanted to, come in and drop a drop shadow on these different things. Adjust the spacing on there so we can get exactly what we want. Description, again, looks a little small, so let's come into that. Let's just bump the size up on there to give it a bit more impact. Drop the weight down. So really, really easy to deal with. 
you know, we can get in there and fine tune this. Obviously, we're not really looking at that too well. It's kind of been obscured by the background image. Well, we could easily change that if we want to by putting a sort of overlay on top of it, whatever we want to do. So if we come out to hover effect, we can change that from being a different hover effect. And as you can see, because we've chosen a different style now, we have different hover effect options. So you can see we've got fade out. So when you take a mouse over, things fade out. Pretty cool. We put an overlay on there. Let's just put that overlay on. So really, really easy to work with. You can fine tune this, change the colors on there so you can get it to match up to exactly what you're doing. Have a different effect for the hover to the normal. So what you could do is just easily have this so when you actually go over it, that's when the sort of overlay appears or disappears. Whatever you kind of want to do. We can tweak the effect duration so we can make that quicker. So you can see that gives us a much quicker zoom effect. Or we can push it over to the right hand side and get a much slower, smoother effect on there. So it's really, really easy to deal with. So that's just one example. If you want to change the way that looks, let's just go back to the skin. Let's just change this now to classic. This is where the layered option comes in. So you can see at the moment we've got the image pushed at the top of the actual layout itself. Well, we might not want that. So let's just say we want to put it to the left hand side. We now get this nice kind of 50 50 split on there which we're not limited to. We can tweak and fine tune that should we want to as well. So we come over to style, for example, you can see we can go through and mess with the alignment, the box height. So we can easily fine tune and tweak that. We can adjust the padding and so on. Like I said, set the alignment, the vertical position, whatever we kind of want to do. So we just push the minimum height up. So you can see at the moment, our text is all displayed in the middle. Well, we could say we want that to be the top or the bottom whatever you want to do with it. The image then we can do the minimum width so we can fine tune and tweak that. So you can see we can go right the way up to 500 pixels or we can work in a percentage value. So you can see we can go up and we can push that over however we want to work with it. And then you can fine tune obviously the text in there because obviously it's a little on the large side now and looks a bit kind of crazy. So there's a ton of options in here that you can go in to fine tune and get a really good look in call to action if you want to use it that way. You could use it for almost anything where you just want to have a little bit of interactivity and just have something that sort of really grabs the attention. And that's how you can start to use the call to action, the latest widget that's been added to Elementor Pro. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content to the channel. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on anything we cover on the channel, or anything you'd like to see covered in future in the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. Until next time, take care.